Hey guys, how's it going? Over this video, let's talk about the agents by Mistral, which were very recently released. Now, these agents are actually very, very similar to the assistance API by OpenAI or ChatGPT, which effectively help you create or define certain agents that can you know do multiple things before they respond to you or respond to the question that your user is asking so if i go to open ai right now and it makes sense because i have a setup done here i created a very basic agent here which allows you to you know lose weight by giving you data with respect to what you're eating in your meal so here's what i'm gonna do i'm going to add the detail of the food item here let's say two egg omelet and then I'm going to be running the agent here and this will go ahead and give you the nutrition value for the food item. So you can see documented all the things with respect to calories, the protein, carbs, fats and so on and so forth. Again, what this agent basically does is that it takes the input from the user and then follows these guidelines that I've shared for the agent and then respond to us in a specific format. Now, agents not only allow you to generate text, but you can also attach functions to these agents. Now, what I mean by that is that let's say if you want to go to an external website, do research before you respond, then that's something you can do with an agent. So if I click on function here, you can basically say that the function should be able to, let's say, get weather in from a specific location or for a specific location. And then it will automatically decide when to call this function. It can also run code and you can also upload knowledge for this agent, which it can then use before it responds to your user questions. Now, this is a very, very advanced agent and Mistral released something very similar. They call it agents and they have a agent builder where you can build this, but they also have it in API. Now, I don't think assistant specifically has a UI per se on chat GPT, but there are custom GPTs which you know, kind of equate to same thing as agents. You can also think of this as Claude projects where you can create projects. And then when you're speaking to the model, the model will refer to the knowledge base or instructions that you've shared and respond to you in a specific format. Only that you can't call functions in these projects, or I don't think you can do that for Mistral right now either. So if you look at the documentation that they've shared, you can see these are autonomous systems powered by LLMs. Given high level instructions can plan, use tools, carry out steps of processing and take actions to achieve specific goals, which effectively what agents really are. And then there are two ways to build agents on Mistral right now. The first one is using the agent builder, which we will take a look at in a little bit. And then there is the agent API. So if you want to integrate agents in your app, then they also have an API available, which you can effectively use to call using your app in order to generate the data or text. So let's go ahead and start building our first agent. Go ahead and click on this link, which will take you to console.mistral.ai and then build agents new. And you can see this now looks very similar to OpenAI's assistant. I think they changed it, but it looks very similar to OpenAI assistant. When you're in the agent section, you will have an option to actually name the agent, define the model, which the agent will use. And one thing that OpenAI does not offer right now is that it can actually take few shots prompts and then based on the input and output sample it can generate the output way more accurately right so again to give you a high level understanding about view shots multi shot single shot or two shot basically mean is that you would feed some example of input and output and then based on the examples that you share with the model the model learns to answer the question in a specific format. If you give some samples to the model, it's highly likely to respond to you better than you know it would otherwise. So if you look at a lot of benchmarks by multiple companies, so let's take a look at Llama 3.1 and you can see here it's eight short COD on the GSM 8K parameter. Now, while it says that Llama performs better when you share eight examples of input and output, the comparison itself becomes biased because if I were to feed one or two examples, meaning two shot or one shot or zero shot in that scenario, maybe GPT does better than Llama, right? So the, these are what shots basically mean is that the amount of input and output samples that you would feed to the model and the more input and output sam samples that you feed to the model, you know, likely the model is going to be more accurate. Either way, let's continue building our agent. So again, we're going to be calling it weight or maybe food nutrition agent, which will effectively take the food item name and then give us nutritional information with respect to what that food really contains, right? So there is the randomness factor makes the output less random. The higher value makes it more random, right? So if you want to ensure that the model responds in specific format only, and you don't want to do too much creative writing, you may want to turn down the temperature in our scenario. We want to turn down the temperature because we want it to respond in specific format versus if you want to do creative writing, then you can go ahead and 
you know, improve the temperature to maybe one, in which case it's going to do more creative generation for you. And this is important system prompt, which basically is the uh, instruction that the agent should follow for you. So I'm going to be copying the prompt that I have on custom GPT or assistance here, and I'm going to be pasting it here, right? Which basically says that your personal dietitian, your job is to take the food item and then give me information with respect to what the item is in the JSON format. So that's a very simple uh, instruction. You can also add more demonstration with respect to some input and output samples, but I'm not going to be doing that because this is a very straightforward problem. But let's see how the UI looks like in, in case we wanted to do it, right? So let's go ahead and click here. And then you can see what the user input will be and what the expected output will be for the sake of, you know, learning, I'm just going to be copying this and then I'm going to be pasting it here. And then I'm going to be copying this and I'm going to be pasting it here. So I've added the demonstration now. I don't, I don't think I need a second one. And that's about all you can set up right now. You know, if you look at the uh, communication that they've made here, which says autonomous agents that can use tools in order to take certain actions, I don't see a method for us to currently you know, call functions or use specific functions. I've tried changing the model as well, and I don't think I can use specific functions. And by the way, we are going to be using Mistral large two for this, which is the most advanced model by Mistral right now. And it seems as of right now, I don't think we can add functions to this, meaning we can't attach external tools in order to run these models. So anyways, that's not a problem, which basically means that we can create an agent that can respond to us in a specific format, but won't send our data anywhere or will get data from any external source per se. Either way, so let's go ahead and deploy this agent or, you know, before you deploy, let's just go ahead and test it out now. I think I will need to deploy it first in order to test out here. So let's go ahead and click deploy. Now, when we do the deployment, you have an option to actually either use it as a chat or you can use it as an API, which will make this paid. So I'm going to be keeping this for chat as of right now. And once you do that, your agent should be ready. For some reason, I'm not able to add the, uh, you know, text here similar to when, what I'm able to do on the, you know, open AI platform there. So it seems like this is like a very, very high level, um, release of agents right now. It does not do too many tasks, which is kind of expected. And either way, let's go ahead and click on this link here, which will take us to the agent that we created. So this is the ID of our agent and it says food nutrition agent, which is what we effectively want to use. Now, what we can do is we can put things like four egg white boiled, right? And then when we press enter, you can see it's generating the output in the way that we want it to. So it's working exactly how we expected it to. But then again, this is something that you can also do in assistance right now, which is essentially the same thing as agents. And the reason why I took this example is that I'm working on a new project, by the way, called this, uh, which will effectively take a meal item and then give you calorie level breakdown of that item. So let's say we put four egg white boiled and then we click on submit. It takes some time, but you can see we get all the details with respect to this food item and then you can add meal. And when you refresh, you will be able to track your calories, proteins, carbs, and so on and so forth here. And this is, these are the actually use cases of the agents that you should be looking at. Uh, building on your end again this is something that i created for my own tracking and to keep you know track of what i'm eating throughout the day because i realized some of the apps that i use for uh, calorie tracking are not as good because i have to type a lot of things select details and so on while this app that i created is very simple you just upload the image of the item or say it in the voice input and the app will be able to generate this for you so it becomes very easy to track and again it's very consistent because when i put this same item yesterday i did put it yesterday and it was 68 calories right so the answer is consistent it's not random and yeah i think what i'm looking at right now is from the agent standpoint is Mistral is moving towards more function led agents, but they don't have it yet. Let's see if they mention anything in the documentation. You can see there are the exact same things that we saw on the front end is what we can do right now. And then if you look at using an agent, it's the API call that you can actually use. Now there are again, you know, some examples that they've shared with respect to different agents that they created. But again, what you can do right now is create an agent without enabling them to use any tools right now. So it can't work with tools and it can't work with multiple functions right now, which is essentially the same thing as tools. But again, I think it's a great step from the agent standpoint and over time this will evolve right now. Crew AI appears to be the best 
framework to build AI agents, which is exactly what I created the course on mini course on. So go ahead and take a look at that. And that's going to be it for the video guys. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you guys in the next one.